Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Lim Reviews. So I've been using the Amazfit GTS that I have on my wrist here for almost a week now. And in this video, I'm going to attempt to show you how accurate the trackers are on this particular watch. So just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a professional fitness trainer or trainee for that matter. I'm just a skinny boy doing uh, tech reviews on YouTube. But in this video, I actually wanted to show you guys how accurate the Amazfit GTS is as a fitness tracker. So just to be clear, I'm only going to be testing out four items because that are the four activities that I can actually test. So the first test um, I'll be carrying out is the steps count test. Um, here we basically track how accurate the steps data is actually being calculated on the watch. The second test is a cycling activity test. So we use a lot of uh, bicycles to cycle around the neighborhood here in China. So this is something that I can definitely test out. The third test is the heart rate sensor test. A lot of people have been asking me like how accurate is the data here and there. So this will finally put all those questions to rest. And last but not least is the sleep tracking test. <laughs> so all right, let's jump into all these tests right away. So first up, like I said, is the step count test. So I went to the gym actually to try out one of the machines and I noticed that the step count on my watch was actually pretty accurate. I actually did a couple of runs, so it wasn't just on one run, I did like three or four runs and each time I noticed that the step count on my Amazfit GTS was actually very consistent with the data I'm getting on this particular machine right here that you're seeing. So besides that, I also tested the Amazfit GTS together with my rather reliable Honor Band 5 and I found that the results are also very consistent. So in other words, if you are using this Amazfit GTS to just calculate your steps um, for your daily walks or runs, you can definitely rely on the data to be accurate. Moving on, let's talk about test 2. So test 2 is actually the cycling activity test and like I mentioned, I cycle a lot here and there every day. Um, so what I did was I brought the watch out and just tested it by cycling around the neighborhood. So before you, you actually start this activity, all you need to do is head to the watch and, and start up the cycling mode in your activities. And right away, I noticed that the watch was not able to detect the GPS. So this happens very, very often. And I find this pretty annoying because the GPS on the watch just fails to work properly. And often, more often than not, I find myself actually having to cycle to a certain spot until I finally get the GPS locked. And then you'll have to hit the go button in order for it to start recording your cycling. So one thing I also noticed here is that although I started trying to get the GPS at spot A for example, once I got to spot B, I'm able to get the GPS on. And when I went back to spot A, the GPS was still locked. So I'm really not sure why the GPS is so poor at um, getting a signal. But once you find the signal, the GPS will be pretty good. It will stay locked on regardless of where you cycle. All right, so cycling test. So far, cycling is pretty good as long as you get the GPS connected because then you'll have your range, your speed, and all those data right available from the watch itself. Of course, you can also go into the app on the phone, the Amazfit app, and you will find more information there. So cycling test, as long as you get a GPS locked in, I would say that the results are also pretty accurate. Moving on to test three, the heart rate sensor test. All right, so for this one, I, was, I went a bit extreme. So in order to get the most accurate heart rate um, results, I actually brought out my Omron blood pressure monitor. So this blood pressure monitor here is actually one of the uh, more accurate ones and it also has my heart rate on it. So I did a test on the Omron uh, sensor and I got this result right here. And as you can see, after doing the test on the Omron blood pressure monitor, I also did it on my Amazfit GTS and the results were very consistent. So what I can say here is that I've done the test at least five times and each time the result was really consistent and it was and the watch was only about two to three BPMs um, different from what I'm getting on the Omron blood pressure monitor. So in other words, what I can say here is that the heart rate sensor on the Amazfit GTS is definitely very accurate. All right guys, so heart rate sensor, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Moving on to the last test, the sleep tracking test. This basically tests how good your sleep is for the night and as you can check out in your Amazfit app, they actually have a lot of information there. You have your uh, time that you're in bed for, your deep sleep, light sleep, and it also tells you what time you actually fell asleep and what time you woke up at. One more important thing that they actually tell you is the time that you were awake during that 
particular night. So I actually tried the Amazfit GTS, having it on my hand for three nights. And to be honest, the results that I got was pretty inconsistent. Now don't get me wrong, the time recorded for when I actually fell asleep and when I woke up was actually pretty correct. Um, in such that whenever I went to bed, I actually checked the time and it re basically records like five to 10 minutes after I've like been in bed. But one thing I need to note here is that the time awake, it always shows me like zero minutes saying that I have been actually sleeping throughout the entire night. But that is not actually true. So in one of the nights, or maybe I should say in most of the nights, usually when I sleep, I do actually tend to wake up at least once or twice during the middle of the night. And I actually stay awake for like 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes even 20 minutes before going back to sleep. But it always shows uh, on the app as zero minutes. So it's just not registering the time I've been awake for. Another thing I've noticed is that let's say for example, you wake up at 7 a.m. and you are just lying in bed and you only get up from your bed at like 7.30 a.m. So I don't know if you guys do that, but I'm the kind of person that sometimes when I wake up, I just want to lie in bed. So I stay in bed for like another 15 to 30 minutes. And the thing is that the Amazfit watch actually registers the time where you actually like get up from your bed. So in other words, I was actually awake like 30 minutes before, but the app only registers me as being awake 30 minutes later. All right, so um, basically I would say that the sleep tracking test, you can use it for like a really simple reference purpose, but don't really take it like too seriously. And yeah, I'm sure you guys uh, will definitely want to get better sleep, but don't rely too much on the Amazfit app. Try to rely on you know, yourself by trying to get into bed earlier and yeah, just sleep early to get up early. All right, so I think that's it for the test here. Um, this is all I can do right now. The steps count, the cycling test, um, the heart rate sensor as well as the sleep tracking test. If you found this video helpful, please do drop a like down below or maybe leave a kind comment as that would help me out a lot. If you guys have any further questions, please let me know what you guys think. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright, bye!